Coming up, celebrating the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act with an epic flight. Teaching ag flying is a family affair. And flying the last frontier. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Lightspeed Zulu 3, the most preferred, most awarded headset in general aviation. With decades of providing unsurpassed value and unsurpassed functionality, pilots all over the world love flying with Zulu 3. Try Zulu 3 today, risk-free, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Lightspeed, fly with Zulu. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Alyssa Cobb. Flying an airplane as pilot in command is an amazing accomplishment for anyone, but especially for Jessica Cox. As the first certificated pilot without arms, Jessica has fought through many challenges to get to where she is today. That's right. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran has the story about Jessica's recent trip to AOPA headquarters to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Pilot Jessica Cox is an inspiration. Well, it's pretty obvious that I don't have arms and that was from birth. I was born this way and my parents to this day are not certain as to what caused it. But as a result, I adapted and my body adapted to using my feet for everyday things from eating, riding, to turning a doorknob, and now flying a plane with my feet. <laughs> Jessica was originally afraid of flying, but she overcame her fears and worked hard to earn her sport pilot's license. It is so incredibly empowering and it gives me that accountability that I'm, you know, that I can uh, be a responsible pilot. I can literally be up there in the sky uh, with my l life between my two feet. <laughs> Jessica flies an air coupe, and it's perfect for her because there are no rudder pedals. The rudders and ailerons are interconnected. I keep my legs up here just like this most of the time, and I have uh, my left foot right here on the throttle. So this is the positioning for uh, most of it, and then I use my left foot up down here so I can use it to support as I'm pulling this yoke back and adjusting things. I can also hook the back of my uh, knee, hook my knee on the back of the yoke so that I can hit, say, change my radios, um, if I need to adjust my altimeter, just like that. Jessica came to Frederick, Maryland to fly with someone very special to her, retired Senator Tom Harkin. Senator Harkin championed the Americans with Disabilities Act 30 years ago this week, and it made a big difference in Jessica's life. It helped me when I was a young girl. I was a first grader when the ADA went into effect. And so I started noticing things as a young person in a public school that were done to make it easier for me, more accommodating for my needs. Like for example, the doorknobs. The doorknobs in the school were turned from round doorknobs into lever doorknobs. So these, those small things to make sure that I could be successful in school were implemented. The two took a couple trips around the pattern at Frederick Municipal Airport. Okay, ready for takeoff. Wow, nice. Very smooth. Thank you. Very smooth. Wow. Frederick Tower, Air Coop 26 Romeo at midfield for 2-3. Oh, there you go. Whoa, yay. <laughs> Grease it on. Oh, Grease it. I had to give you a good one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to be able to fly with her today. It was one of the real joys of my life. And the senator is not the only person inspired by Jessica. She travels around the world as a motivational speaker, sharing her story and encouraging people to pursue their dreams. Why I wanted to become a pilot was to overcome my fear. And I just want to tell young people to be fearless, to never give up, and to uh, really work hard for those goals, because it's not going to be easy. But once you do achieve it, it makes the process and makes the journey all the more meaningful. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. Thanks, what Josh. a special flight. <laughs> yeah, great, great, great job on the story, Josh. And, and, and Jessica is so inspirational. You know, Alyssa, I've known her for mm -hmm. more than a decade now. And uh, every time I'm with her, interact with her, uh, hear from her, yeah, she's just so inspirational. Just amazing what she's able to do. Yeah, I met her at the first AOPA Aviation Summit. Right. And getting to watch her put her headset on and tie shoes and things, she really is remarkable and has such a positive outlook on life. But she is an inspiration. I'm so glad they got to do that flight to celebrate the 30th right. anniversary. Yeah, it was great to have her here. 
And AOP had another notable visitor this week. U.S. Congressman Ted Budd from North Carolina came by to take a look at AOPA's headquarters. He got a chance to see all that AOPA is working on, including a tour of AOPA's You Can Fly Academy. He also took a look at our Bonanza technology demonstrator with the latest and greatest avionics from Garmin, and then went on a flight in the AOPA sweepstakes RV-10. Uh, you know, it's very stable, great climber, well built, and just for this particular aircraft, just, you know, the, the restoration was uh, phenomenal. Love the interior as well and the avionics. As an AOPA member and instrument rated pilot, Bud, like most of you, is eligible to win the RV-10 sweepstakes. He's also a member of the GA caucus. And GA airplane manufacturer Texas Aircraft is working on an electric variant of the Light Sport Colt. The e Colt will use a lithium sulfur battery developed by Oxus Energy. The company says the batteries are significantly lighter than traditional lithium ion batteries. The e Colt is projected to have a flight time of over two hours with a 200 nautical mile range. Also, Epic Aircraft just received FAA production certification for its carbon fiber single engine turboprop E1000. The production certificate allows Epic Aircraft to accelerate E1000 deliveries. The company has already delivered three aircraft this year. The six seat airplane can reach a max cruise speed of 333 knots, climb at 4,000 feet per minute, and fly as high as 34,000 feet. The production aircraft is a version of the kit belt Epic LT that the company has been selling since 2005. And 2005 is the year we saw the Honda Jet for the first time. Hard to believe it's been 15 years. And Honda just released a video to celebrate the 15 year anniversary. Honda revealed the Jet at EA AirVenture that year. The design got a lot of attention during its debut and from there Honda went on to start delivering Honda Jets a decade later in 2015. Since then, over 150 have been delivered. Last year, the company rolled out the Honda Jet Elite, offering a number of improvements over the original model. Honda is also rolling out a social media campaign to celebrate the anniversary with the hashtag 15 year challenge. Now, Alyssa, I don't know whether you were at uh, AirVenture that year, but it was a really big deal that Honda Jet rolled it out. And I was particularly honored in that earlier in the year when they were finally ready to admit publicly that it even existed, because it had flown in 2003, but they'd kept mm -hmm. it very quiet. And then uh, finally in 2005, they were ready to talk about it. So they actually contacted me and asked if I would be willing to come down, do an interview and sort of tell the world about this project. And so I was really honored to be able to do that, to uh, meet with the designer, Mr. Fujino, and uh, get an interview. We did a air-to-air -air photo mission with a proof of concept. And uh, actually he sat next to me in my Bonanza as we did that photo uh, mission. And he saw for the first time his airplane in flight. Uh, so it was kind of neat to be there with him. Oh, wow, that must have been a great moment. It was, it was. And then of course later, uh, a few weeks, months later, it showed up at AirVenture. The story uh, in our magazine was on the cover that month. So it was, uh, it was quite, quite, quite an event, I gotta tell you. Fun to be there. Hey, meanwhile, Dower just received certification for the HomeSafe system for its TBM 940. HomeSafe allows the aircraft to land itself if the pilot becomes incapacitated. HomeSafe is based on Garmin's emergency auto land system available as part of the G3000 integrated flight deck. Passengers can activate the system by pressing an orange button located on the top of the instrument panel. I flew the Garmin auto land system in a Piper M600 a year ago. Piper received certification for that system in May 2020. Autoland will also be certified soon on the Cirrus Vision Jet. Now on the other end of the spectrum from advanced automation, aerial application pilots have to rely on pure stick and rudder skills as they fly just a few feet off the ground. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman has the story about a flight school in Florida that specializes in teaching ag pilots to fly safely. For me, the agricultural is so rewarding. You know, at the end of the day, I just felt like I was helping the farmer, as it were. If you have the desire and you like to be low and go fast. Some crop dusters may have a wild and woolly reputation, but at Eagle Vista's Ag Flying School in Florida, safety is no joke. For minimum standards, you must have a demonstrated ability, pass a written test, an oral test, and a check ride just for your private, commercial, ATP, whatever once, you know. And this is one of the few industries that don't have that. Even though we're flying sophisticated, multi-million dollar airplanes, electronic guidance 
In many ways, it's still like the Old West. And Eagle Vistas is no pilot mill. We feel it is very important for our students when they come to the Ag Pilot Program to basically have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with their Ag Pilot instructor. He takes them under the wing. He only has one student to concentrate on. And also it, the students will not be waiting for airplane. We feel it's the quality that's important. If they just have basically the 40 hours, then they're gonna need to com complete some time building uh, tail oil training if they don't have it, the ag course and the commercial. So I would say somewhere between uh, two months to, th to three months, it could still take that long. You gotta be comfortable flying close to the ground. Um, I've had some uh, military pilots and uh, uh, mostly the airline kind of, kind of pilots uh, don't like it down low. You've got to pay attention to uh, your surroundings. There's a lot of hazards out there, low level. Uh, you look for cell towers and of, of course trees and we look for bees because we don't want to kill the pollinators with whatever sure. you know chemicals that we might have. So, so you've got to be pretty observant. You've got to have some crop recognition and a desire. A different lifestyle, it's a lifestyle. If you don't love it, you're never gonna get rich, but I feel that I'm making a difference in some of these young people's lives, and, uh, and I'm hopefully I'm helping the industry at the same time. Jill Tallman, AOPA Live. You can read more about the Eagle Vista's Ag Pilot School in the upcoming September issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. When we come back, the Bahamas are back open. And flying in Alaska. Your plane is a valuable tool. With the Genesis Aerosystems STEC 3100 Digital Autopilot, you can rest assured you will arrive safely to your destination. The 3100 is the industry's most advanced autopilot for single and twin engine aircraft, providing exceptional workload reduction safety enhancing capabilities such as straight and level mode and speed protection. To learn more, visit our website today. Welcome back. A bittersweet week here at AOPA. Our longest tenured employee is retiring. Many of you have likely interacted with Kim LeMay. You may remember her as Kim Lee over the last 43 years. She's been an AOPA member services rep since November 4th 1977. That's the Carter administration, folks. Or she was, at least, until Wednesday. Kim has worked for four presidents of AOPA. She says she'll miss interacting with members and the rest of us newbies here at the association. What I miss the most AOPA is people, too. See all my co-workers, you know, I always see them in the morning, you know, say hello and, um, it's just like a routine, you know, go to work and be there and see everybody. You know, that, um, and, um, you know, the most there, and then I miss to be traveling to the uh, certain air show. You know, I like to be there, um, see face to face, you know, with the member, talk to member. Kim, Kim plans to spend her time traveling and entertaining guests at her home with her famous Vietnamese cooking. So Alyssa, um, it's a real loss for those of us at AOPA and for AOPA members. Uh, Kim was, was great with the members. People would stand in line at Air Venture and Sun and Fun and other places specifically to talk to her where there might be a, a rep available over here, but nope, they wanna talk to Kim. And she's so much fun to be around. You know, As, as you know, she's, she's like a party in motion. <laughs> she is, yeah, she will be greatly missed by all of us and the members. Yeah, good luck, Kim. Yes, best wishes to you. Well, Garmin is dealing with the aftermath of a massive cyber attack. The July 23rd attack knocking Garmin offline, disabling the company's online products and customer support. That includes the Fly Garmin web portal that supports the Garmin Pilot electronic flight bag app. At last check, most of Garmin's online problems had been resolved, though a Fly Garmin system status message indicated that customer support staff remained unreachable by email and chat, with limited capacity for telephone support. Now, Garmin is being tight-lipped on details about the attack, saying only it was a, quote, cyber attack that encrypted some of our systems. 
Garmin also said there's no reason to believe that customer data was compromised. Yet another aviation event is going virtual. Redbird announced that the 2020 migration training event will be all online. The event will still host a number of networking opportunities and notable speakers, including NTSB Chairman Bruce Landsberg and Heart Soul Propeller Chairman Joe Brown. The event will take place October 21 and 22. Find more details at the Redbird Migration website. And the business aviation community is working to make private air travel safer in the era of COVID-19. The Clean Flying Coalition is a new not-for-profit group of industry stakeholders who aim to develop and share best practices for dealing with air travel during the pandemic. Led by FlightAware, the group hopes to make the safety measures taken by operators transparent so people feel better about flying. Now, if you are looking for a place to fly, the Bahamas are open again. Due to the pandemic, the islands were temporarily closed for commercial air and boat traffic from the United States. Well, now the borders are open again, but there are several restrictions in place, including a mandatory quarantine period or a required negative COVID-19 test. You can find out more about COVID-19 related travel restrictions in the Bahamas, and many other destinations on our website. Now, if the tropical oasis of the Bahamas is not up your alley, maybe you want to chill out up in Alaska. Kyle Kate sends us some beautiful clips from flying in the last frontier. Wow, absolutely stunning video. Thank you, Kyle, and everyone else who has sent in video. Now, if you have some clips you think we'd like to see, send them to the link on your screen. Yeah, that's great stuff. Thanks, Kyle. Beautiful love flying in Alaska. Hey, thanks for being with us this week. We hope you're staying safe and relatively cool this summer. And remember, we have a ton of content for you on AOPA.org. It's a great activity to do while staying socially distant and air conditioned. That's right. If you have any thoughts on the show, send them to the address on your screen. We'll see you next week. My name's Tom Rao. I've got about 18,000 hours total time as a pilot. There are certain things that you can see with an onboard radar, uh, and there are certain things you can't see. And the nice thing about SiriusXM's weather product is that it adds another layer uh, of safety, which you know really plays into the aeronautical decision-making process for me. It, it allows me to get a more strategic, big picture when I'm going to go uh, seven or 800 miles. You know, just facilitates decision-making on a long-range spectrum. The Sirius XM weather features that, that I engage in the airplane, of course, there, there's a selection. The wind feature and the ability to work out uh, route changes with center to take advantage of the wind is sort of a carryover from my airline days or in the Navy when we always felt like we didn't have enough gas. So being able to make gas literally by shortening its segment length, the, the wind feature, is it's invaluable. The number of dollars saved as a result, I, I just don't think I can calculate it.